Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, I'm going to walk you through an important topic on cybersecurity certification exams, LOCARD's principle. I'll first give you a quick overview to help you understand what LOCARD's principle is all about, and then I'll dive into some examples that will help you when you're answering exam questions. Now, we all know that cybersecurity incidents take place on a regular basis in every organization. And cybersecurity professionals are often called in to investigate those incidents and restore normal operations. Depending upon the circumstances, we might need to gather evidence that helps us identify the perpetrator of an incident. The field of digital forensics provides us with the tools and techniques that we need to perform those investigations in a rigorous way that then allows us to use the evidence that we collect in court. Now, when you think about forensics, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is the work done by crime scene investigators at a physical crime scene. They often take photographs, dust for fingerprints, and use other tools and techniques to determine who was at a crime scene and the actions that those people took. These are tried and true techniques designed to get to the bottom of a crime by investigating physical evidence. Locard's principle is the core principle that underlies the field of forensic science. The principle is the work of Dr. Edmund Locard, one of the pioneers of criminal forensics. Locard started a criminal forensics lab in Lyon, France, where he developed the first police laboratory and created many forensic techniques that are the basis for evidence analysis that's still performed today. Locard's principle, clearly stated, is that every contact leaves a trace. That means that when two objects touch each other, there will be some evidence left behind. That might be a fingerprint, a carpet fiber, a drop of blood or spit, a scratch, or virtually anything else. It then becomes the work of the forensic scientist to discover those traces and interpret them to learn more about a crime that took place. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, Mike, this all sounds very interesting, but what does it have to do with cybersecurity? I'm going to give you some examples of the ways that Locard's principle applies in the world of cybersecurity that will help you answer exam questions. But before we get to those, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's get back to Locard's principle. So we had this principle that every contact leaves a trace, and we know how it applies in the physical world but what about in the world of cybersecurity and digital forensics? Well, most digital forensics experts believe that Locard's principle applies in the digital world as well. Whenever there is contact between two digital objects, that contact leaves a trace. It's up to cybersecurity experts to discover and interpret those traces. Let's think about this in the context of an example. Suppose that an attacker conducts a SQL injection attack against a website. That attack is going to leave evidence in all of the systems that are touched as part of the attack. Let's think about what some of those places may be. First, the attacker used some sort of device to wage the attack. That might be a laptop or desktop computer, a smartphone, a virtual server instance, or something else. That device is going to contain some evidence of the attack. It might have logs that show who was logged into the device, tools that were used in the attack, or the device itself might have physical fingerprints on it or be in an area covered by a security camera. Next, the attacker was connected to some network. Maybe they were at home or in an office, or perhaps they waged the attack from a coffee shop or airport Wi-Fi. The network used by the attacker will likely have logs that might reveal important information about the attack. That attack traffic had to cross through several security devices as well. Certainly, the web server would be protected by a network firewall. It might also be protected by an intrusion prevention system, a web application firewall, or other controls. 
each of those devices may have identified portions of the attack and maintained records that are helpful to the investigation. Those might be log entries from the successful attack, or perhaps the attacker tried some other things that didn't work that created important log entries. From there, the traffic moved on to the web server hosting the application that was attacked. That server should have logging configured that captured the actual requests that were received during the attack, and those requests can be used to reconstruct the commands sent by the attacker through the web server to the database server. And that brings us to the last system with relevant information, the database server. If logging is enabled on that server, you'll see the commands executed against the database and you'll be able to reconstruct the attacker's actions. Now, those are a ton of different information sources and they're all brought to us by thinking through an attack in the context of Locard's principle. If we think about how an attack took place and remember that every contact leaves a trace, we'll have plenty of different information sources that we can use to piece together our investigation. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment and think about our SQL injection attack. We talked about collecting evidence from the attacker's system, the attacker's local network, firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, web application firewalls, the web server, and the database server. Are there any other places that the attacker might have left a trace? that could add more information to this investigation? Now, I can think of a few off the top of my head, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment below with your ideas for additional sources. That's what you need to know about Locard's principle when you take your next cybersecurity exam. I hope you found this explainer useful. Thanks for watching and subscribe to see more.